Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Nuclear Enterprises NE6591 Precision Pulse Generator. I got no clue how old this is, but you can see from the design here that yeah, it's definitely not new. Uh, I've been trying to figure out from looking here at the front exactly what is it it does because i think this has something to do with frequency so this is maybe the frequency repeat but we have also some decay so and then a delay and we have normalize and we got an external trick or a pre-pulse an attenuator output and the normal output okay amplitude i can understand but there's definitely a lot of stuff I can't figure out exactly what is going on. I hope to figure that out uh, during this video if this thing works. Yeah, first I need to open it and have a look. Do a little pre-inspection before we power it up. But at the back here we can see, yes of course, the nucle Nuclear Enterprises label. Yes, you can see. Maybe I can fix this. So this is the on off switch and a fuse and that will be external, internal, some stuff here, zero to 10 volts. I'll go for internal. See that mains connector here is the famous Bulgin. Uh, this is a very, very old connector. It was used in uh, England back in the 50s and 60s on some instruments it's a nice three pin it's quite compact and look the earth pin is nice long and then we got the mains pins that's a little shorter look at that and then there's this little steering pin but of course in my stock pile of cool interconnect i do have the right power connector so I can actually power this up easy easy but I think we should still have a little inspection first let's see how we open this thing because I just see a plate like this with four screws and it's the same at the front so how exactly is that going to work well well let's have a look that was almost too easy just the four screws here and I could uh, pull up the front we got a little bit of a uh, wires going to the back so this prevents me from moving it too much away i was thinking about maybe just remove the four other screws and then i could probably uh sit and play with this a little bit better i guess then we can um then we can see some more what is going on in here yeah of course I did expect to find a lot of capacitors and all the timing stuff here. And this this one is not mounted correctly. As you can see here, this little pin is supposed to go through a hole in the front. But there is no hole at the right distance uh, from the mounting hole. So that means when I turn it just f do that like that so that is something I need to fix I also see some missing components here and then a little add-on board where another circuit was added so they kind of figured out some of the components they were not doing exactly the right thing or in the right way or something like that so they added a little replacement circuit see it's just uh, a few transistors not that much really and um, this switch here at the front frequency PPS something whatever that is it's probably a start manual start when you're in off I would expect you could hit this one and then it will make one pulse so this is probably a manual pulse this one feels like it's not working and I figured out exactly why. Because if you look, let me get some better light. If you look at this, 
it's not working at all. See? See, if I push it, it hits the circuit board and it's not moving out where the switch is. So, and see what they did here. We got some little rubber spacers. So the circuit board is lifted. But if I push it down here on the circuit board, then I almost can activate this switch. So here's a mechanical problem and it it never worked. I mean, it's just never ever worked. How bad is that? So why do you want those uh, spacers? Yeah, that's because we got stuff on the back side of the circuit board and they kind of didn't figure out that all this stuff would short circuit. Look at that. To the mounting aluminium pieces here. So this is why you need to lift this up instead of making it the right way. I mean, ah, come on. And that is the mains transformer with the two uh, 110 uh, windings. So you could easily reconfigure this. See, there's a short here. And then you can easily reconfigure this for 220. And this is exactly how it is. Um, yeah, I should definitely take it out so we can have a better yeah, look. Of course, that was quite easy. So now we can see a lot more of what is going on. So we got some extra circuit boards standing up like that. That's probably the power supply, right? And uh, because we see the secondary winding from the transformer goes here and we got some DC voltages coming out of this. So, and the cool thing about those capacitors, this is a classic way to figure out the age of stuff. See, West Germany and then fifth week 68. So this is how old this unit is. And uh, that'll be all the switches for the attenuators. Remember all those output attenuators. So it's made really nice with attenuation stepped like that, going again and again and again to the output. Wow, really nice. Maybe I should show you a little buck that I found. So here is the power supply. See all the rectifier. Ah, oh, damn it. Why is it doing that? All the rectifier diodes. And look at that resistor here in the middle of the picture right there. Can you see it's cracked and it's also swollen? So that one is broken. There's another one down there at the bottom. So it's probably a positive and a negative supply rail. And one of them here is broken. So I guess there's a reason for this to be broken. Probably uh, one of the rails uh, overloaded by some shorted caps. So I've been looking a little bit around for possible caps problems. This is uh, also a thing to look for, these leakage things like that. But they see no splat around here, so it's nice and clean. So I think I will try and measure this resistor or possible, see if I can access the solder points and see if I can replace that one. And then I will try and uh, power it up. At least that is uh, my plan so far. I didn't have a um, 10 ohm resistor in a half a watt. I believe these resistors are about a half a watt. So this is, uh, yeah, it says 10 ohm here, of course, but it measures 20. I measured the other resistor here on the other uh, power supply, and that measures 10 ohms. So this kind of warns me there's probably something wrong with the circuit. But I put in um, two quarter watt resistors in series, so that will give me a half a watt. And uh, that should make up about 10 ohms. And now I will monitor the two voltages. See, they share the same ground. So I believe this is uh, ground. And then we've got a positive and a negative supply. If I monitor both these supplies during power on, slow power on, I should probably be able to monitor um, an early warning. I mean, if something is broken, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm monitoring the two power supply rails unit is powered on and is connected to my scope so I should be able to see if anything happens here I just put all the stuff here in the middle I guess so I mean 
it should be uh, doing something at least, right? So my idea is I just turn on my mains and then crank up the voltage and then look at that both of the voltages they go up nice and fine and we see some pulses and I should be able to continue my voltage all the way to 220 because it's rated for 220 right wow that is nice so it seems like it's uh, working I'll try and uh, play with the scope so let's try and set up this a little bit better and crank up the power supply so here we got the pulses and I think if I play a little bit see this is the repeat okay so if we crank up the repeat to the maximum and then we play with the scope Ooh, it's a little bit unstable so what is this decay doing uh -huh. that is some funny stuff as well so this is I mean isn't it doing exactly the same thing oh hmm so we can crank this up to maximum crank this up to maximum and then we go even faster okay so this is 48 kilohertz okay then what can we do with this one okay so here's another funny delay and this is also doing this and here aha so this one has something to do with the fall time of the pulse <laughs> but all these they do exactly the same thing so what is this normalize what is aha uh -huh. so this is amplitude and then what is this amplitude doing the same thing hello <laughs> i don't get it this, this is exactly the same thing what the i'm just too dumb to see the point this is exactly the same thing that happens right and then positive or negative yeah okay then it goes negative fantastic so there you have it some pulses and uh, you can very very slowly modify the fall time but it can do okay now it's we are the fastest so this is 96 kilohertz okay i better write this down and then let's let's see what is the slowest what can we do here so if this one is and then it goes a little bit unstable in the last one huh that is not good so this is eight kilohertz and then i can crank up here and play with the timing okay i figured out so this is the dk it says and this is the frequency probably so there's actually a little bit of a some sort of a bug in this system so when i go faster like this see this is slower look at the curve it's still the same curve right but if i go up here and then look at the decay see this also changes the frequency right but if i go slower it still affects it okay now i'll go a little bit slower Ooh, see now the frequency is the same but now the decay works but i think probably it has something to do with decay there's no space in the repeat for a for the decay then it's kind of affecting it somehow all right see i can really make a super zero but narrow pulse let's zoom in and see the pulse ooh, yo, 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 yo. i need to zoom in so this is the fastest slow yeah yeah it definitely works So this is the slowest faster 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 aha how about that this one has no effect no so this is 100 hertz okay quite interesting so we can definitely generate all sorts of 
funky pulses. So this is the slowest. So this is nine, nine hertz. Yeah, okay, so this thing can do from nine hertz to 96 kilohertz of repeat. And then we got this uh, microseconds from one microsecond, yeah, to the 10, 100, one, uh, one millisecond uh, of fall time. So that is how, uh, how this thing works. And this is what it can do. Pretty cool from 1968. So yeah, I think we did figure out what it can do. All I need to do now is repair this switch, if I can do that. I think it is fair to say this switch never worked because it's moving using all this space and this is exactly where the circuit board is. There's no way this switch could ever have worked. See if I push it, see, now we got all the space that we need. So this is of course in pulse off, then you have your little pulse generator switch here. So let me show you, see, do, 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 do. and then you generate some pulses. So that is how it works. Oh, cool. Now the unit is working again. And I can say thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Bye-bye.